Hey, it's me again. Today's date is November 23rd, 2022. It's a Wednesday, and we're waiting for those dates to come out. We're waiting for Prospectus 424, as Jen Burnus stated on the Twitter Spaces call the other day. And we are waiting for the official PR to come out. Both of these will contain the record dates when MMTLP will stop trading. And as Smokey stated, all short syn synthetics have to be covered because Next Bridge isn't going to have a QCEP. And you can't go into this, into a private company with shorts and synthetics. There's no QCEP, so everything has to be covered. And a lot of people were wondering how many shorts there were, myself included. And you can get to different numbers, different aggregates. And say, hmm, that might be the case. I decided to take more of a mathematical approach to see, you know, if that would show me something. And I went with a couple different data sets. So I was given one particular data set by a very reliable source. And this number kept showing up from other sources as well. Because a number was given... And they said, well, once MMTLP reaches this price, it can't really be suppressed as much. There's a mathematical model being used for a lot of things. And, of course, there are mathematical models. I mean, people love charts. What's a chart? It's just a graph, which is a representation of equation. It's a physical representation of that equation. That's what a chart is. In this case, I'm going to actually do some solving. So this is, of course, a math video, and let me preface this by saying that I'm actually, I don't think I'm that great at math. I tend to have more of a knack for contextual things, so if it's a story problem and I can visualize it in my head, that's way easier for me. If you just give me random numbers, I'm like, well, what's the context here, right? I'm giving random numbers without context, I'm like, well, what do you want me to do with them? What am I supposed to do? You know, what am I looking for here? What is their context? Is there like a series of events that ended up here? But real life story problem math, I'm a bit better at because it's, you know, there's a story to it. There's a series of events that happened. There's context in that, you know, so there's some parameters given, right? And that's how I looked at this is there's a story behind it and there's parameters given. So I'm going to walk you through it. And this is how I basically got to my range of short shares of 216 million short and synthetic shares outstanding to about 280 million short and synthetic shares outstanding. The range is work. This isn't quite exact. It's like I said, around a specific number. So we're going to solve this using what's called simultaneous equations, where basically you have one equation going and you're trying to find an unknown for another equation, given by the point of intersection, which is what we know. So we had the data sets. So I'm like, okay, we can use the point of intersection where MMTLP becomes quote unquote uncontrollable. It goes parabolic, that being $60. But once that number came up in a couple of different other instances, I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to go with this number. And I spent a couple of days doing this. Like I said, it didn't all come to me at once. I had to really like grind those gears. I probably have to replace the transmission. Gears got ground down. What a mouthful. Okay, so we're going to solve this with, with simultaneous equations. We have the supply which is how many shares that we have in MMTLP and the shorts covering. The context of this, this is going to be a one-to-one -one ratio and slope, meaning that for every one share, you know, that, that shorts cover, that's one of the supply. It takes out all the other variables. It takes out people holding to certain amounts, you know, 500, 600, 1,000, 200,000. It takes out that. It takes out People swing trading this at higher amounts, like they see it at 100 bucks and they want to play it to 500 bucks, kind of like GameStop, right? It takes out those people. It takes out quite a few things. Like I said, this is a quick and dirty linear model. And usually this thing isn't linear, but it, it gives us something to work with, right? It gives us some sort of representation, something to work with. Like I said, this is pretty much like a one-to-one -one linear at this point. And I'm only going to that $60 mark, really, because MMTLP can go 
parabolic, which would change everything. The $60 mark is the is basically the breakover point where MMTLP goes crazy, and I'm using that as my point where the both equations become simultaneous. That's where both equations are equal. The floats are on 98 million shares. Okay, that's the first one. Originally I did 137 million, but it works on both. Uh, like I said, there's a range where this pretty much works. So at the 98 million shares, that accounts for all the AST transfers, all the people who can't trade this overseas. 98 million shares is the float if you take those out. So we have our first instance where we have the breakover point and the y-intercept. Okay. Yeah, the breakover point. That's our simultaneous equal point. Plus 98, which is our float. And you wind up with 158, right? Equation number two, this is the shorts equation. We have an unknown variable. Okay, that's what we're trying to find out. And Q, which would be, basically we're gonna solve for U because we know what Q is, right? Once you do this, you know what Q is. So you can solve for U. Again, equation number one, you take, 60 that's the breakover point that's basically you know your your variable plus your your intercept it's a linear equation and like i said one to one make it easy one to one one short covering buys one share of your supply one to one i mean it's not one to one because there's a float but basically on a linear graph yeah those two together that's 158 now we have Q in this, and we can solve for U. So 158 is equal to U minus Q, right? Because both of those equations are when they're equal, they both, the outcome is 158. The dependent variable will both be 158. Because they're simultaneous equations, and when this is 158, it's 60. That's our breakover point. 158 equals U minus 60. So what you have to do is you have to add 60 on this, which is equal to U, which is equal to Q for this when the equations are equal, and that's 218. That's where I get my basis of 218 million shares. If you plug this back into an equation, where P equals 218 minus 60, that's, you know, the simultaneous equations of supply and demand and the market equilibrium price, we are given P is equal to 158, which again works in this favor right here. The supply when the two equations intersect. Now, again, this has a range to it. So what if we go by my original numbers of 137 million outstanding shares rather than 98? As this number gets bigger, the shorts number gets bigger as well. So, like I said, this is a one-to-one -one equilibrium basis, and it only goes to a range, right? We can't go over 165 million outstanding shares. That would be like if nobody registered their shares and there was nothing locked up overseas and everybody could freely trade everything, which isn't the case for MMTLP. We know that, right? So there's a limit to this. And not everybody has directly registered their shares where nobody's trading this. The amount of shares available isn't zero. There is a range to this. Okay, and again, if you assume that the float's 137 million shares, you go through the same steps again. The equation number one at the equilibrium point or the breakover point before MMT goes parabolic, that's where both equations are equal, simultaneous equations. You know, at 137 million shares that are the current float, again, equilibrium price is 60. You get to your first equation, which is, you know, 197. You plug that in. 197 would equal unknown minus 60. So you solve for U, which is you add 60 to 197, which is equal to 257. Again, my range of shorts in this is... Shorts and synthetics are about 216 to 280 million shares. Again, that's a quick and dirty linear method given a data set I had 
And given the other data set, which is what's the free float? I had a range. And this is a one-to-one, -one, assuming one short covers one buy of this. Of course, given this graph, MMTLP can still go very, very high. It can easily get to 400 if you want to keep graphing it, $400. Uh, that's just given this graph. Of course, not financial advice. That's just math if you want to keep graphing something. But this doesn't account for the fact that MMTLP will go very parabolic once that breakover point of $60 is reached. Again, that was a quick and dirty linear model, simple math, uh, just to give you what I considered to be my estimates. Okay, guys, hopefully we'll see something later today. Hopefully we'll see something with the dates on it. I know momentum for MMTLP is very lacking right now. A lot of people are selling. They had stop losses on there. Once MMTLP gets to a certain point, you know, you're not going to be able to swing this. So, like I said, I used some math here to back my reasoning, my findings. I'm not just throwing numbers out at you. I, you know, I went into this with the analytical mindset. Hopefully we're seeing something later today. I'm just as anxious as probably everybody else. But then again, know your emotions. I will see you guys soon. Goodbye.